Hi everyone, welcome to this month's speaker series. Uh, today we are doing a first of its kind event. We are doing a live 30 minute thyroid healthy workout with Curves Fitness. Uh, this event is hosted by Paloma Health. We are an online medical practice that focuses exclusively on testing and treating hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. And we offer an at-home thyroid test kit, virtual consultations with thyroid doctors and nutritionists, we have a daily thyroid care vitamin supplement, a free mobile app that helps with uh, lifestyle and dietary changes, and a ton of free content and education to help you take back control of your thyroid health. So like I said, today we are joined by Curves. Curves is a leader in women's fitness, and they've helped millions of women live stronger and healthier lives uh, with fun, fast, and safe fitness programs. And what they're particularly known for is their 30-minute circuit workouts led by a coach targeting every major muscle group in the body uh, with strength training, cardio, and stretching. And today we're joined by Macy Lee, who is their Senior Manager of Science and Programs. She's been with Curves for something like 18 years. She started as a manager, uh, owned her own franchise location, and now she's in this position uh, where she's responsible for creating and producing content for really all of Curves fitness programs. So Macy, I'm going to pass it over to you to share more about what you do and who you are, and then you're going to introduce us to Leah to walk us through um, our workout today. Uh, we will have time at the end for live Q&A, so feel free to drop your questions in the chat at the bottom of your screen as the workout goes on, and we will get to as many as we can at the end. All right, Macy, over to you. Thank you so much, Katie. Uh, we're super excited to be here today and to be sharing with everybody. Um, as Katie said, I am the Senior Manager of Science and Programs for Curves North America. And one of the biggest parts of my job is developing and designing programs for people of all fitness levels, of all uh, fitness abilities. And so with that, we want to you know, keep in mind people who may have conditions such as hyperthyroidism. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn my camera off because I'm going to share my screen. So I have a little bit of information to share with everyone. First and foremost, again, thank you so much for being with us today. We are excited to be here. We are going to work out. I hope you guys work out with us. So we're going to ask everyone to go ahead, grab a water bottle, grab a towel, and get ready to have a good time. Um, Autoimmune disorders, particularly thyroid conditions, really do lower the body's capacity to handle extra stress, which exercise is a stressor on the body, and too much stress can trigger inflammation. So we want to make sure that we're working out in the appropriate zones and, and working out correctly so that we get the benefits without overtaxing our bodies. Um, so thyroid hormones can significantly decrease um, the strength of our respiratory and skeletal muscles and the body may not be able to keep up with this incremental effort. So again, just really making sure that we're working out in appropriate zones. One thing I want to point out at the bottom, some more benefits of exercises. It ensures high more, uh, thyroid hormone levels are stable um, and we do that through regular testing. We always want to make sure that we're getting plenty of sleep and recovery between our workouts and that we're doing the right type of workout. So with that, today's workout is going to be a balance workout. It is going to be very yoga inspired. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. But we have a couple of quick reminders as we get started. If you're having trouble with the audio, you can always change the audio in the bottom left corner of this Zoom meeting. I always like to point that out as we jump in give you a little bit more about our workout before we jump in and get started. Every 30 seconds, you're gonna hear a prompt that says change stations now. That's, oh, my computer just got real happy with that. Um, that's kind of the, the curve signature uh, phrase, if you would, change stations now. Every 30 seconds, we move from one movement to the other so that we're not overtaxing one muscle group or, or one type of movement for too long. We're gonna alternate between some um, static strength moves and holding some, some balance postures and, and as well as some uh, that'll have a little bit more movement to them. But again, this is gonna be a yoga-based type class. And then about every 10 minutes, we're gonna stop and check our heart rate. This is gonna ensure that we are working out in the appropriate zone for us. So most of us are gonna wanna be between 50% to 70% based on your age. So the, you've got this chart up here. Now I'd love for you to take a few moments. The ages are across the top. The percentages are on the left-hand side. And if you would iso, you know, kind of identify what is 50 to 70% 
for your age group, I think for most of us, that's going to put us somewhere between 15 and probably like 20. Um, you want to keep those numbers in mind as we go through and check our heart rate. So I hope you guys are all ready to jump in and get started. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and I'm going to pin up Leah here so we can see her a little bit better. Okay, and I'm going to get our music going. So again, if you haven't done so already, you want to grab a water bottle, maybe grab a towel, because we're going to jump in and get started. All right, when it says change stations here in just a moment, we're going to start with a mountain pose. So we're going to stand with our feet hip distance apart and really focus on our breath as we get started. Again, this is going to be a lower intensity, um, focused on static strength and holding some strong poses. Raise your arms up overhead. You want your shoulders to remain relaxed and neutral. You don't want to shrug them up by your ears. You're going to slowly exhale as you hold this pose. But I want you to keep your core engaged to maintain a neutral spine. And make sure you're focusing on your breathing as you hold this pose. You don't want to hold your breath. Oxygen is what brings nutrients to our muscles as we exercise. Our next pose is tree pose. From here, we're going to shift our weight onto one leg and reach our arms up overhead. Again, find that balance. Ideally, you can bring your foot up towards your knee on your calf. You can even have it down by your ankle, whatever works for you. And if you need to tap your foot to the floor, that's perfectly fine. Again, we're working on some static strength with holding that balance on one leg. I want you to remember which leg you did though, because this move will come up later and we're going to want to repeat the other stand. side. Hey, now, let's... Are you able to um, pin Leah so we can see her on the screen? Absolutely. I thought I had. Sorry about that. I'm going to pause here. Leah, can you hear that? Okay. All right. Perfect. I think Thank we're good to go. Much. Thanks, everyone. Excellent. Okay. So now we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to go into that good morning stretch. If you will just go ahead, put your feet hip distance apart. You're going to bring your arms out to your sides and hinge forward. You're only going to go as far forward as you can, keeping your ears, shoulders, and hips in alignment. We got started on this one just a little early, but there's nothing wrong with holding this one a few extra seconds. We're going to keep our knees soft, so we don't want to lock our knees out, but this is stretching out our erector spinae across the back, our glutes, and into our hamstrings. Remember, you want to breathe as you hold this stretch. You never want to hold your breath as you are doing yoga type movements or any exercise Change movement. Stations now. Our next move is a frog. So we're going to keep our feet in that wide stance. You're going to hinge forward and try to place your hands on the floor if you can. If not, on your knees is great. You're going to lower your hips down to the ground into a, like a squat and then raise back up, but keep your hands on the ground or on your knees. Again, we're looking to stretch out those glutes and hamstrings as we do this movement. This one feels so good. All right, from here, we're gonna do a deep forward bend. So we're gonna go ahead, reach up, hinge forward again with that neutral spine. Come all the way down as far as you can. Just let that upper body hang. And I want you to notice how far can you reach? Can your hands touch the floor, the tops of your feet, your shins, your knees? As you exhale, let your body elongate. Let those muscles relax. Now let's move into a deep forward lunge with a torso twist on the right side. We're going to step that right leg forward, press the back heel, that left heel into the floor. And now we're going to rotate our upper body towards that right knee to give a nice stretch to our side bodies, our obliques. Um, this always feels good on the hip flexors as well. Remember to breathe. Change stations. Great. Now. now let's repeat that on the other side. So we're going to step the left leg forward, step the right leg back, press the heel into the ground. Arms are up at shoulder height. We're rotating towards the left. You're going to feel this stretch across your midsection. And remember, if your arms start getting tired, that's normal, but I really want you to strive to hold them up the whole time. Really work on that static strength. Change 
options now. From here, we're going to do a crescent lunge on the right side. So again, step the right leg forward, left leg back, and we're going to lower as far down as we can. If you can put your leg flat on the floor, fantastic. Reach your arms up overhead, slightly push your hips forward, really feeling that stretch in the hip flexors and through your abdominal muscles. Think about lifting your rib cage up off your hips while keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed. Great, if you're on the floor, we're gonna just switch legs. If you're standing up, again, switch legs, left leg forward, press the hips forward just slightly and focus on your breathing. As I mentioned before, oxygen is what brings nutrients to our muscles. So we really wanna make sure we continue to breathe and not hold our breath as we hold these stretches. At the, we're going to come on up to do a warrior one on the right side. So go ahead and stand up. Feet are going to be a little wider than shoulder distance apart. Right leg facing forward, left leg turned out. Our right knee is slightly bent. We're reaching our hands up overhead, elongating our body. Remember to keep those shoulders nice and neutral. We don't want to shrug them up. Now. now from here, we're going to move to warrior two. So we're just going to drop our hands out to shoulder height, lunging forward a little bit more, but keeping our weight centered between our front and back leg. We want to make sure that front knee doesn't go past our toe. And your arms may start getting tired, but I want you to really strive to hold them up at shoulder height the entire time. From here, we're going to go to a humble warrior. So we're going to reach our hands behind us, keeping that warrior two position. Lower your torso as best you can towards your front knee. As you do this, you want to make sure that you keep that ear, shoulder, and hip alignment so we don't want to round our back. If your hands can't reach behind you, that's fine. Just reach straight back as best you can. You're stretching out those glutes. Once again, you're stretching the hamstrings. Now from here, we're going to finish this warrior sequence with warrior three. So we're going to go back to a warrior one position and reach up, then bring our torso towards that knee. And if we can, lift that back leg up. This is really going to challenge your balance and your proprioception as you hold this move. If you need to tap your foot, that's completely fine. You are working your thigh muscles, your ankle muscles. You're working your core while you're holding this movement. Now. All right, let's repeat that sequence on the left. So we're going to start with warrior one on the left. Uh, left foot going forward, back leg turned out. Slight bend in that front knee. We're reaching up, lifting the rib cage, but we're keeping the shoulders nice and relaxed. Remember to breathe. Nice, slow, steady breaths. Now we're going to go ahead and check our heart rate. So I want you to take a moment to locate your Get pulse. Get ready for a 10 second count. Ready? Three, two, one, count. Stop. Move to the next station. Fantastic. I hope everyone was between 15 and 20 when they kept up at Warrior 2. We've got the left foot forward. The right foot turned out. We just that lunge. Body weights right between our front and back legs, and our arms are out at shoulder height. From here, let's move to warrior two. So we're going to reach behind us. I'm sorry, we're going to humble warrior. We're going to reach behind us and lower our torso towards our side. Really stretching out those glutes, stretching up the erector spinae and down into the hamstrings. Again, if you can clasp your hands, fantastic. But if not, just reaching behind you opens up that chest as well in this stretch.
Our next one is warrior three. So we're gonna go back to a warrior one movement. We're gonna lower our torso towards our thigh, find our balance and slowly lift that back leg up off the floor. It is completely normal to have a dominant and non-dominant side. One side that you just find you're stronger on or it's easier to balance on. And one side that you may struggle a little bit more with. So if you need to tap your toe, that's okay. Remember to continue to breathe. Excellent job, everyone. Now let's move to a upper dog. So we're gonna start um, with our feet hip distance apart. We're gonna place our hands on the floor in front of us, creating a V shape. So there should be a nice straight line from our hands through our shoulders up to our hip, and then a nice straight line from our hips, knees to ankles. And as we hold this pose, we really wanna focus on getting our heels down as best we can. Elongate those calf muscles and drive those heels down. We're gonna stay in this position and we're gonna do a three-legged downward dog by lifting the right leg up behind you. Lift it up as high as you can, whether that's all the way up in a straight line behind you or just a few inches off the ground. You are working on core strength to hold this position. You're working on leg strength to hold that leg up and you're definitely gonna work your arms. If you need to modify this one, you can do a chair pose. Change stations now. now let's repeat this on the left side. So lower that right leg, let's find your center and lift the left leg. Again, if you need to modify, you can do a chair pose, but I really want you guys to challenge yourself and see how long you can hold this. If you need to reset, lower down to your knees and then you can come back up. Change stations now. From here, we're gonna lower into the plank. So we're gonna bring that leg down and walk our hands and feet out to a plank position. You can do this from your hands or from your forearms. You just want to make sure that there's, again, a neutral spine, so a straight line from your ear to your shoulder to your hips. Engage your core to help hold your hips up without letting them sag. And I know it's really common, you've heard me say it before, when we hold that position that we want to hold our breath, but I want to focus on breathing. Now let's move to a star plank. So we're going to lower onto one knee. On our right knee, we've got our right hand. We're going to reach up. If you can reach the leg up as well, fantastic. Try to look straight ahead to maintain that neutral spine. Change station Great, now. now let's switch sides. We're gonna be on the left, um, on the right knee, lifting that left leg up. Oh, this one's tough. You guys are fighting for Change it. Stations now. All right, our next one is head beyond knee stretch. So we're gonna go ahead and sit down on the mat, extend our right leg out in front of us, bend the left leg with a neutral spine. So ears, shoulders, and hips in alignment, reach forward. We just wanna avoid rounding the back. If you can reach your foot, fantastic. Your ankle, your knee, wherever your flexibility is today with this side of your body. And remember, we're doing the right side first, so when we come back to this next time, we'll do the left. Change stations now. Now let's challenge some core strength with a boat pose. We're gonna go ahead and sit with both legs extended in front of us. Place your hands at your hips and lift your legs. And if you can, reach those arms out straight out and hold that V position. If you need to lower your arms or legs and reset, that's absolutely okay but I want you to really challenge yourself on how long you can hold this. Your core is probably burning Change at this point in time. Now. So let's do one last stretch before we start over again, and that's a butterfly stretch. We're gonna sit with our feet, our soles of our feet together, sit up nice and tall, and gently press our knees down to the ground. You can place your hands on your ankles or on just the insides of your thighs. Just make sure again that you're holding that nice neutral spine.
workout, let's go ahead and stand back up and start over again with mountain pose. So we're gonna have our feet hip distance apart. We're gonna take a deep breath and raise our arms up overhead, keeping our shoulders nice and relaxed. We're looking to lift the rib cage off the hips. Exhale, let the stress from today go. Let the tension from today go and just feel this moment as you're doing the workout. Now. now let's do the tree pose. Last time we did the right leg, so now we're gonna balance on the left. Reach up. Again, bring your foot up as high as you can. If it's your ankle, your um, calf, inner knee, wherever is comfortable for you. And if you need to touch your toe to the floor, that's fine. Now. All right, our next move is good mornings. We're gonna keep our feet hip distance apart. We're gonna bring our arms out to shoulder height and hinge forward at the hips, lowering down as far as we can without rounding our back. We're stretching out our lower back through our glutes, through our hamstrings. We wanna keep a nice soft knee so that we don't lock our knees as we do this. Let's go ahead and check that heart rate again. Go ahead and find your pulse either on your wrist Get or on your carotid artery on your neck. Ready? Three, two, one, count. Stop. Move to the next station and resume exercise. Fantastic. I hope everyone's heart rate is somewhere between 15 and 20. We're going to move to a frog stance now. So our feet are going to be a little wider than shoulder distance apart. We're going to hinge forward, coming all the way down. If you can, place your hands on the floor. If not, place them on your knees. We're going to sink our hips back and down and then raise back up, but keep the hands on the floor so that we're really stretching those hamstrings. Lower down into a squat, keeping that neutral Change spine. Now. Come on back up. From here, we're gonna do a forward bend. So we're gonna reach up overhead, hinge forward at the hips, and just let that upper body hang. Again, to stretch out the glutes and hamstrings where we carry so much tightness. Take a nice deep breath. As you exhale, let your muscles relax a little bit more and deepen that stretch. Change stations now. Now let's repeat that forward lunge with torso twist. So we're gonna step the right leg forward into a lunge, press the back heel down towards the ground and rotate our upper body towards the right knee. Remember to keep the core engaged to help support your spine and give you stability as you hold this stance. Change stations now. Great, let's repeat that on the left. Left foot forward, right leg back, pressing the right heel into the ground. Twist so that you turn towards that left knee. You should feel this across your midsection, getting a nice stretch through the abdominals, through the obliques. I really want you to strive to keep your arms up the entire time. Change stations now. Great, now let's do a crescent lunge on the right. So right foot forward, left foot back. If you can, lower all the way down to the ground. We're gonna raise our arms up overhead, again, keeping the shoulders relaxed, but lifting the rib cage and press the hips forward so that you can really stretch across the hip flexors. Change station set. Now let's repeat that on the left. So left foot forward, right leg back, reach up, Take a nice deep breath, press the hips forward. You should feel this on that right hip flexor. If you're doing the standing version, really try to press that right heel into the floor to deepen the stretch. Change 
Now let's stand up and let's do the warrior one on the right side. So right foot's gonna be going forward. The left foot turned out at about 45 degrees. You're gonna reach your arms up overhead, lifting that rib cage again. Slight bend in that right knee. And I want you to exhale and just relax. From here, let's do warrior two. So we're just going to slightly pivot, deepen that lunge, and bring our arms out to shoulder height. We want to keep our weight centered between the front and back leg. So you don't want to be leaning too far forward. You don't want to be pressing too far into that back leg. Nice and centered weight as you hold this position. Now let's move to a humble warrior. So we're going to keep our feet where they are. We're going to reach our hands behind us and lower our torso towards that front knee. Holding our arms behind us opens up that chest. Hinging forward stretches out the lower back. It stretches out the glutes and into the hamstrings. Now. now let's do a warrior three. So warrior one position. We're going to reach up, hinge forward at the hips, lowering our chest toward our knee. And if we can, lift that left leg up behind us, finding balance and center over that right leg. Remember, if you need to return to warrior one, recenter yourself. Change stations now. Fantastic, everyone. Let's repeat all of this on the left side. So let's go warrior one on the left side. Left leg forward, right leg turned out 45 degrees. Reaching up, let the shoulder blades relax. Lift the rib cage off the hips. Gain an extra inch or two in your height today. Let's move to warrior two. So we're going to widen that stance just a little bit. Center our weight between our legs, bending that front knee. Arms are going to be out at shoulder height. Look straight ahead. Try to keep those arms up the entire 90 seconds. I know those shoulder muscles, the deltoids are going to start getting tired. Now. Great, let's do a humble warrior. So from here, we're just going to lower our torso onto our knee, raising those arms up behind us as best we can. Remember, we wanna keep a neutral spine here. So ear, shoulders, and hips are in alignment. We don't wanna round our back as we hold this pose. Now let's move to warrior three. So we're going to start in that warrior one position. We're going to reach up, then hinge forward at the hips, lowering toward our knee, find our balance and lift that right leg. As I said before, everyone has a dominant and non-dominant side. So it's okay if it's a little harder on one side than the other. Now. now let's go to a downward dog. So again, we're going to start with our feet hip distance apart, hinge forward, placing our hands on the mat in front of us. Walk out forward slightly so that we create a nice V shape and then focus on pressing your heels down to the mat, really elongating the backs of your legs as you hold this. Inhale as you exhale, let those legs sink deeper into the mat. Now move away from your station and find your heart. Slowly rate. rise back up and let's go ahead and find our pulse. Get ready for a 10 second count. Ready? Three, two, one, count. Stop. Move to the next. Fantastic. We're going to go back into that downward dog position. 
And then we're going to lift our right leg up behind us. Again, working on some core strength, some arm strength and leg strength as we hold this position. Keep your core engaged to maintain that neutral spine. Change stations now. Great. Go ahead and lower the right leg. Let's lift the left. Every time we work the right side of our body, we want to work the left side. If we work something in the front, we want to work the back to maintain body symmetry. I know your arms are starting to burn. We're almost there. Change more seconds. Now. Great. Let's go ahead and lower into a plank. So we're going to walk our hands out. You can either be on your hands or on your elbows. You just want to have that nice neutral spine with a straight line from ear, shoulder to hip. Engage your core to help hold your hips up. You don't want your hips to stag down or come up into a downward dog position. Now. Fantastic. Now let's go to a star plank. So we're going to get on our left knee and our left arm, and we're going to lift up the right leg and the right arm, creating a nice star form. You're going to look straight ahead, keep the core engaged to help hold that leg up. Station and now. let's switch to the other side. Let's do the left side. Again, you're going to find one side is easier to do than the other. And that's okay. Just going to work as hard as we can to create that body symmetry as we hold these poses. And believe it or not, these static poses are strength training, doing functional body weight, holding yourself up. Now. now let's go into a head beyond knee pose. Last time we did the right, so now let's do the left. So left leg out straight, right knee bent. We're just going to hinge forward at the hips. Again, stretching out the back, the glutes, and the hamstrings. Now let's do that boat pose and work our core one more time. So we're going to sit with both feet straight out in front of us, hands at our hips, lift our legs up to a V position. And then if we can lift our arms straight out towards our legs, engaging the core. This is going to feel like you did 50 crunches later. It's, it's a great movement. Now. And our last one for today, we're going to do a butterfly stretch. We're going to sit with our soles of our feet together, sit up nice and tall, keeping that ear, shoulder, hip alignment, gently press the knees down to the ground. Now. Fantastic. Thank you, Leah, so much. You did fantastic for us. I'm going to go ahead and share one more thing with everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie, if you can uh, make me a presenter again so I can share my screen. Yep. Give me just one second here. Sure. And, all right. You're going to be the host again. Thank you. So I just wanted to share with everyone a little bit more about my curves on demand um, and with our workouts. So um, let me just see here. Um, sorry, my screen is not wanting to share everything today. I apologize for that. We're going to try this again. I always love when uh, we get technical difficulties on the last minute here, right? <laughs> Oh. 
Here we go. So the workout we did today was from our balance section, but I wanted to quickly point out we have lots of different categories within our My Curves On Demand workouts that can help you tailor your workouts for what is best for you. As I mentioned, today's workout came from the balance section. We also have a body basic section, which is a lower to moderate intensity workouts. Um, that will also feature functional body workouts. The one thing I will point out is that for people who do have hypothyroidism, cardio workouts may be a little bit too intense. And so that's why we like to have a lot of variety. Um, and so there's always lots of different things in here to choose from. As I can click on here, you'll see there's lots of different workouts, even within the categories themselves. And you can go through and you know, filter them by intensity or by time. Um, there's you know, lots of different ways you can filter it depending on how you're feeling that day and how much energy you have. But look at all of those different workouts and that's just the first page of two for you to choose from. So I just point that out because this is a great way of staying active um, without again, over taxing your body. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to all categories. A few other things I wanted to point out about um, My Curves On Demand is we offer a live tour, a coach-led live tour twice a week. So if you wanted to get a little bit more information about My Curves On Demand or, you know, where do I go to find the workouts I like or how do I get started with this program, you can always come and click on Take the Live Tour. And a coach kind of walks you through all of the different um, categories and all of the different things we have on here. Um, so again, lots and lots and lots of different types of workouts, lots of variety ranging from very high intensity to lower to moderate intensities. We have 15 minute or less workouts. And then again, I always like to point out one of my personal favorites is our audio only category because this features um, in here, we have two guided meditations, which I think with the way the world has been the last uh, two years, we could all use a little guided meditation. Um, so I just wanted to quickly share with everyone um, with the uh, what our website looked like and where you could go to find everything. Um, and that's all I had. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Macy. Um, we have two questions that I saw come through. So maybe um, if you want, you can turn your video on and we can do those and then we sure. will wrap up today's event. Um, so the first one was uh, what what to do if I struggle with transitions from movement to movement? Do you have any tips for that? Great question. Um, and the one thing I will say with that is that comes with practice. Um, I always think about anytime we, do, we start any workout, the first time we do any workout, when, when there's a change, whether that's we've done something like Zumba before or, um, you know, a curves workout within the traditional, you know, brick and mortar curves location, when anytime that we move from one movement to the other, when you're brand new, you're gonna, always going to be a, a second or two behind. And that's absolutely normal. That's to be expected. Um, but the more practice you get with it, the easier it becomes. Um, so that's the biggest thing I'd say is just kind of hang in there and practice <laughs> and you don't have maybe to be there can, right away. Maybe I can tack on to that, but do you have any like mindset tips around? Cause it can be sort of discouraging. Like you don't want to do the next absolutely. workout or you're like, Oh, I'm not coordinated enough. Do you have any tips for like shifting your mind beyond just repetition and practice? Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that up. My biggest thing I always try to remind everyone is to not focus on being perfect, but to have fun. These workouts should be fun. You should be enjoying what you're doing. And so it's not about being absolutely perfect every time we did it, but did I have a good time? And did I feel my body move today? Do I feel better because I moved today? Um, and so I always say, you know, if, if we're doing a, a workout, um, you know, that was more of in our body basics category where we're doing repetitions, um, you know, if I did three squats today, then my goal for tomorrow is to do four, regardless of how many the person on the screen did. I'm setting my own goal to just do a slight improvement. Um, or, you know, if it's a balance movement, if I was able to hold that movement for 10 seconds today, fantastic, let's celebrate that. And the next time I do this workout, let's see if I can do 12 seconds. Yeah, that's helpful. Micro goals are definitely, can definitely be helpful and not feel like I have to go from zero to a hundred immediately. Absolutely. The second question I saw, um, and you just showed us a bit of my curves on demand, but can you talk a bit about the benefits of, of 30 minute workouts? Like why are most of curves workouts under 30 minutes and how, just what are the benefits of this? 
Absolutely. So the, the idea behind a traditional curves workout is incorporating strength training and cardiovascular training into a 30 minute workout using, um, you know, our resistance band if we're doing my curves on demand or our hydraulic equipment if we're in a club. And the whole reason behind that is we really tried to make this something that anybody could do. This is a workout that would normally take you almost two hours to do in a traditional gym. By the time you completed your full 30 minute of cardio, as well as all of your strength training for upper body and lower body. So we like to just make it doable because you know, any, any workout that you can actually do is a beneficial workout. And sometimes time is a barrier for us busy women. Who of us has two hours on a regular basis to go to the gym. That could be a big deterrent. So that's why we stick with that 30 minutes is because we wanna make sure that no matter what you have going on in your life, we can step away for 30 minutes. And even with our express categories, as I pointed out, those are 15 minutes or less. So if we can't do a full 30 today, doing 15 is better than doing nothing. That's awesome and super helpful. Thanks for answering those two questions. Uh, we're gonna wrap up here, guys. If you have any more questions, now would be the time to drop them into the chat. Uh, we will also send out a replay of this event um, in the next few days. So you can come back to this again if you want. Um, there are a lot of resources on Paloma Health's website around how to work out safely and effectively with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. We have previous speaker series. We have articles. Um, if you're interested in that, you can go to our blog and there's a search bar so you can search for exercising with hypothyroidism. Um, I believe that Curves is offering you guys, very sorry about my dog, my, Curves is offering you guys a free week to their Curves on Demand program. And so we will send that link in the replay email so that you have access to that. Thank you to everyone who has joined us today um, for this workout. And thank you, Leah and Macy, for guiding us through this and for answering all of our questions. We really appreciate everyone's time and we hope you have a good Thursday evening.